Hi guys, welcome to this 22nd tutorial in this series of programming PIC microcontroller with Micro C Pro for PIC compiler. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn the RS232 serial communication. The RS232 serial communication is one of the oldest communication where data is sent or received one bit at a time. This protocol can be easily be used to communicate between a PC and various devices supporting this type of protocol like PIC microcontrollers, GPS and GSM modules. This is the simplest way to communicate between a PIC microcontroller and a PC. There are main applications where a user is required to send some parameters to the microcontroller or for the microcontroller to send some data to the PC let's say for long-term storage or for further data processing. While other interfaces like Ethernet and USB all send data serially, the term serial port usually identifies hardware more or less compliant to the RS-232 standard intended interface with modem or similar communication devices. These are a couple of few cables that maybe you are familiar with. This is a USB cable this is the Ethernet cable and this is the RS-232 serial cable that we're going to use in this tutorial. The Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter Controller is the key component of the serial communication between a device and a PC or between devices. The USART is also a common integrated feature in most microcontrollers today which is useful for communicating serial data to your PC or to other devices or even to other microcontrollers. Most of these peak microcontrollers have an internal USART at a specific pins of the microcontrollers like this 18F2620 peak microcontroller has got a built-in hardware USART module at pin RC6 which is used as a transmitter and pin RC7 which is used as a receiver. This peak has got only one USART module, but other PIC microcontrollers have more than one USART module. If for some reason you don't want to use the internal USART module, or if these pins have already been connected to other devices, this feature can also be implemented using any pin of the PIC microcontroller with software in most of the compilers like the MPLAB XC8 compiler. If you are sending data between two microcontrollers, this is very easy. You don't need any special component between the microcontrollers. The transmitter of one microcontroller should be connected to the receiver of the other microcontroller. And the receiver of the other microcontroller should be connected to the transmitter on the other microcontroller. But if you are communicating between a microcontroller and the PC, you're going to need a voltage level converter because the microcontroller uses TTL level which is 0 and 5 volt while the PC uses the RS-232 standard protocol which is different in terms of the voltage levels the TTL of the peak microcontroller uses 0 for low and 5 for high while the RS-232 voltage level standard is plus 3 to plus 15 volt for logic low and minus 3 to minus 15 for logic height. So you need a device to convert these voltage levels of plus minus 15 volt to 0 and 5 volt. The most commonly used device is the MAX232. This is a simple connection of the MAX32. Only three wires are used, the transmitter, the receiver and the ground wire. And these two wires are connected to the microcontroller. The T in is connected to TX of the microcontroller and R1 out is connected to the RX of the microcontroller. For serial communication, all the data transmission is handled by the USART module of the PIC microcontroller, but we have to configure this USART module before receiving and transmitting data. Micro C Pro for PIC provides a set of libraries which simplify the initialization and the use of PIC compliant MCUs and their module. You can access these libraries from this link. There are different sets of libraries 
like the hardware peripheral libraries, the ADC, the CAN, the EEPROM, and many more, as you can see. In this tutorial, we're going to use the UART library. So click on UART library. It says, the UART hardware module is available with a number of P-compliant MCUs. The Micro C Pro for Peak Wart Library provides comfortable work with asynchronous full duplex mode. Before you use this library, you have to make sure that your Peak microcontroller has got a hardware integrated Wart module. Most of Peak microcontrollers today have got at least one Wart module. There are some few important things that you have to consider when using this Wart module library. The first one, it says, Wart library routines require you to specify the module you want to use. To select the desired Wart module, simply change the letter X in the routine prototype for the number from 1 to 2. Because there are some of the peak microcontroller which have got more than one Wart module. So if you're going to use the second Wart module, then you're going to just change the X with 2. But if you're going to use the first Wart module, or if your peak microcontroller has got only one Wart module, then you're going to just change the X with 1. The second important thing to consider, when you are switching between these Wart modules, there is a function Wart set active that you can use. So you can set active other the first Wart module or the second Wart module. And lastly, the number of Wart modules per MCU differs from chip to chip. So you'll have to read your data sheet before using this library. So these are the library routines that you can use. The Wart init, the Wart data ready, Wart TX idle, the Wart read, Wart read text, Wart write, Wart write text, and Wart set active. We're going to discuss few routines in this library. The first one that we're going to discuss is Wart init. It says this initializes desired hardware Wart module with the desired board rate. If you specify the unsupported board rate, compiler will report an error. You can just say Wart init, and here you'll have to specify the board rate that you're going to use. This is a simple example on how you can use this routine. If you want to initialize your hardware UART with 9600 board rate, you can just say UART1 if you're going to use the first UART. If you're going to use the second UART, if your pick has got two UART modules, then you can say UART2 in it, and then you specify your board rate. In this case, we're going to use 9600. This is going to initialize the hardware UART1 and establish communication at 9600 bits per second. The other routine that we could use is WART data ready. You can use this function to test if data in the receive buffer is ready for reading. So this is a simple example on how you can use this routine. Let's say if data is ready, then we can read it. You can say if WART1 data ready equals to 1, then you can do something. The next routine is wartxidle. You can use this function to test if the transmit shift register is empty or not. The other function is wartread. This function receives a byte via the wart module. You can use the wart data ready first to test if data is ready. This is a simple example on how you can use this function. If wart1 data ready equals to 1, you can say wart1 read. This is going to read a single byte in the receive buffer. But if you want to read a string of characters, then you'll have to use the function wart read text. It says this read characters received via the wart until the delimiter sequence is detected. So this is a simple example to show how you can use this function. Let's say if you want to read text until the OK is received. Okay, the first thing as you've learned, we have to initialize first our art module. So in this example, we're going to initialize WART1 with 4800 board rate. Then after a short delay, we're going to say, if WART data ready equals to 1, then we're going to read the first parameter is the text that we're going to read. 
The second parameter is the delimiter. This is a character that identifies the end of the received strings. So this basically means we're gonna read text until OK is found. And the last parameter, this 10, this is the number of attempts we're gonna try to read. And the next function is word write. This function transmits a byte via the word module. So if you want to send a single byte, then you can use this function. If you want to send a string of characters, then we can use the word write text. This function sends text via the word. Let us go to our micro C and create our project. This is a simple project we have created. We're gonna control three LEDs connected to port B of the PIC microcontroller. We're gonna use the PIC 18F2620 with internal 8 MHz oscillator. The first thing we declare a character word read to read whatever we're gonna receive from the PC. We're gonna store it in this variable. Then we're gonna configure our port B as output and the OSCON register to use the internal 8 MHz oscillator. And the first word function that we're gonna use is word init to initialize our word module. We're gonna initialize it with a baud rate of 9600. After a short delay of 100 milliseconds, we're just gonna send the message to our PC using the word write text to send a string of characters. Welcome to studentcompanion.co.za and on the second line, after 500 milliseconds, we're gonna send the text, press 1 for red LED, 2 for yellow LED, and 3 for green LED. Then we're gonna go into an endless loop, waiting for a character to be received from the PC. Then we're gonna say if word data ready, if there is any character in the receive buffer, then we're gonna say word read, which is our variable, is gonna be equals to word read. This is to read the received data. Then we're gonna use a switch case. So if whatever we received, if it's a one, then we're gonna set our B0 to one, basically to switch on whatever is connected to port B0. In this case, it's gonna be the red LED and switch off whatever is connected to B1 and B2. Then we're gonna break out of the loop. And if we receive the two, then we're gonna switch off the red LED and switch on the yellow LED. And if we receive a three, then we're gonna switch off the red LED, the yellow LED, and switch on the green LED. And the default, we're gonna switch off everything. So let us build our project. Build. The build is finished successfully. Basically, we're not gonna connect this section because we are not connecting to a real hardware. We're gonna use the Proteus simulation. That why I left this two pin open. But if you are using the real hardware, then this is basically how you should connect your PIC microcontroller to your PC. We've got our three LEDs connected to port B. This is a virtual serial terminal. You could get it under the virtual instrument and click on virtual terminal. The transmitter of the virtual terminal should be connected on the RX, the receiver of the microcontroller, and the receiver should be connected to the transmitter of the microcontroller. You have to make sure that the board rate of your microcontroller it's running on should be exactly the same board rate of your virtual terminal. To do that, right click the virtual terminal, edit property and set correctly your board rate. We've used 9600, the data bit is gonna be eight, the parity is none and the stop bit is one. Let's load our program. Usart.x, okay. Let us run. It says, welcome to studentcompanion.co.za. And on the second line, it says, press one for red LED, two for yellow LED, and three for green LED. Okay, I'm gonna use Microsoft Virtual Keypad so that I can enter the value to send to the microcontroller. This is the virtual keyboard. If I press one, you're gonna see the red LED is switch on. If I press two, the yellow is on. If I press three, then the green LED is on. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial.
Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.